And about this, what are parents supposed to do? Is the Department of Justice about to learn that it's never a good idea to get between a mother and her child? Here with me now, Fairfax, Virginia parent and vice president of strategy for parents defending education, Asra Nomani is here. Uh, Asra, welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, thank you. And thanks for being such a fierce defender of parents and kids. We need voices like yours. And it was the first thing oh, I, I realized. Can't wait till you come, come yeah. to a school board meeting. I would love to. Um, and, you know, I was on the board at my daughter's preschool and I loved it. It was very enlightening and it was, it was great to, you know, be a part of the curriculum and, and the discussion with other parents. But now we have descended into madness. And it, it's very overt. You know, it, it used to be subtle. But there's a very strong push to keep parents out of education and out of the classroom. Uh, and now it's manifesting in this sort of intimidation. What do you make of this? Oh, yeah, it's absolutely this machine that is trying to ex exclude parents. It's happening from the preschool level all the way up to the high school level. And basically, it's on every level of a student's development, from their education to their sexuality, their gender decision. Everything is basically becoming the care of the government. And that's a real problem. I mean, this is becoming a nanny state in the most scary of ways. And the problem that we've had over the past year is that parents are not shutting up. And you can just rest assured that we're not going to be quiet now. We're absolutely rejecting this idea that we are domestic terrorists. You know, I'm a mom. I'm not a domestic terrorist. And we are going to continue to go to these school board meetings and raise our voice. And it's really up to the government right now, the Biden administration, to issue a ceasefire and really stop this nonsense. Yeah, and the, the National Association of School Boards, they were the ones who got involved and sent a letter to the president. Uh, the FBI has pretty much blown every investigation lately. Uh, the, the Bureau is rife with corruption. Uh, you know, we, we saw the gymnast testify before Congress about the Larry Nassar case and how the FBI right. dropped the ball for 17 months, but now they're going after parents. And... It, it, it really, it's interesting because now parents are going to think twice before they say something because they don't want to be put on a list, but more um, importantly, they don't want no. their children to be targeted by teachers and administration who feel like the parents aren't engaging in correct thinking. We are not going to shut up, honestly. I'm talking to parents all over the country, from Beaverton, Oregon, to Barrington, Rhode Island, and they are more emboldened because, you know, the one thing that you understand very clearly when people put up such a resistance is they are hiding something. And, and I, I know that you understand not only the teachers union is involved in this big machine, but there are multi-million dollar contracts that the school systems are doling out. Oh, yeah. And one of the revelations that we got this week is that, in fact, Merrick Garland's daughter is married to the co-founder of one of these big tech companies named Panorama Education that's just raking in millions of dollars, including here in Fairfax County, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a conflict of interest, a big conflict of interest. And as you know, people protect business, right? And the administration here is doing exactly that with these school systems because they are multi-billion dollar economies. Yeah, and that that is such a good point, Ezra. And if you think about it, schools, public schools just got a one hundred and eighty billion dollar lifeline yes. from the federal government after COVID. And that money is going to go somewhere. And that's what cronyism is. It's these right. businesses uh, yeah, who are exactly. working in conjunction with the government. They are protected. Their interests are protected. And, you know, all the, all the while you have teachers unions who are donating to the Democrat establishment to keep parents out of it because parents make noise. Parents make things difficult as right. they absolutely should, because we see where education is going in this country. And parents, since a pandemic, having seen behind the curtain, they have decided that they are taking their role back. Exactly. We're following the money. And, you know, just two weeks ago in our school board meeting, a mom, Stacey Langton, stood up and she presented the books that include mm -hmm. porn and pedophilia in our school libraries. I mean, just the most explicit stuff. Instead of the school board members saying, Thank you. Thank you, Mom, for speaking to us, and we will investigate this. They shut out 
she, they shut her out of her even her two minutes that she got, mm -hmm. called a recess, you know, made all sorts of allegations against the parents that were there that were just outraged that they couldn't hear this. And then I stood up and I asked them, I begged them to speak, you know, to listen to the parents that are speaking to them. I presented this contract mm -hmm. that this panorama education just received and not a word. Yeah, all Isn't they that did, fascinating? guess what, is increase the contract. Yeah, they yeah. just increased the contract and what now we are holding them accountable and they want to shut us up, but we're not going to No, we're not you're gonna not going to shut up. And hopefully you'll come back and give us another update. Esther, thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. And I want to recommend that everybody go to our website, defendinged.org, and you can, with a, just one button, mm -hmm. send a message to the Attorney General and tell him what you think. Oh, I got a message Politely, right here. Of course. All right, Ezra, thank you. Defendinged.org.